All right then, so now we know how to create basic components, I wanna move on to something called component states. Now, the state of a component is just that. It describes the state of the component. And by that, I mean the state of the data or the UI of a component, because after all, our data within our applications will most of the time be dynamic and forever changing or updating over time. A modal could open or close, or the data we output could change in the browser. So imagine we have some kind of component which is for a shopping cart on a website. Now the state of that component is just a JavaScript object and it looks something like this. So we have our object, a property name called items, which is an array, and inside that array, two objects, and each object represents an item in the basket or the shopping cart. So this is the state of that component. We're storing the local data, if you like, of that component. Each item has a name and a price. Now imagine a user adds something to the shopping cart, the add a new item, then the state would update to reflect that. So we'd have that new object right here, black cloak and price 15 pounds. So the idea is that we're taking this state of our component and we're using that to output dynamically the content inside that component. So we're keeping the state and the output on the screen in sync with each other, right? So it's a way for us to store locally the data or UI state of a component. Another example could be for a pop-up. We could have a component for a pop-up and it has a state very simple with just one property on it called show pop-up and that is either true or false. Now, if it's true, then it's gonna show on the screen. If it's false, it's not gonna show on the screen. So again, we're storing the component UI state here, all right? So that's roughly what the state is all about, but until we get our hands dirty and start playing around with it a little bit, I think it won't make perfect sense. But if you're familiar with view, by the way, it's pretty similar to the data property on a view component, right? So anyway, we'll have a play around with this and then hopefully it's gonna to start to make sense a little bit more. All right then, so let's add some state to this component that we've already created. So there's a couple of different ways we can create the state of a component. And the first way, which is the easiest, is to just define a state property inside the class right here, or inside the component. And we set that equal to a JavaScript object. That's all it is, the state, just a JavaScript object, which is gonna contain some kind of data or UI state. So now we can add our different properties inside this object. So for now, let's just do a name property and I'm gonna give that a value of Ryu and we'll also do an age property and I'll give that a value of 30. Okay then, so that there is our initial state, if you like, of this component. And yeah, it could update over time. We could change this to 35 or this to crystal or something else. But for now, that is the state of the component when it first loads. So it's okay having a state defined on a component, but at the minute, it's not really doing anything. If we were to save this and preview it in a browser, then it's still gonna output the same template with this random number and hey ninjas. We wanna maybe output this state to the template. So let's do that. So instead of this stuff right here, let's output something else. Again, it is gonna be dynamic. We're gonna output some kind of dynamic data here. So we can't just output it directly in the P tag right here, we have to enclose it in those curly braces. Remember, this is how we output dynamic content or data. So first of all, outside of that, I'm gonna say my name is colon, and then inside here, this is the dynamic data. We wanna output this thing. So how can we reference that here? Well, first of all, we say this to reference the component itself. Then we get access to the state property on this, by saying this.state, which refers now to this object. Then we want the name property, so we can just say .name. And so if I save that now, it's gonna output this to the browser. My name is Ryu, okay? So it's taking this property and it's outputting it right here. All right, let's output the age as well. So I could say, and I am, and then we're gonna output dynamic content again. So I can say this.state.age, like so. So if I save that now, we can see my name is Ryu and I am 30. And if I change the state to 35, then we can see, and I am 35. And the same would be true for the name. We'll change that to crystal and save it. Preview that in a browser. 
and we can see my name is Crystal and I'm 35. Okay, so that is how we define our state. There is another way of defining states on a component and that is inside a constructor method, but really that's not necessary at the minute. But the idea is that we have this state and over time it could change. I could input a form field or click a button and that's gonna change this data. And therefore when we output it right here, it's gonna update in the browser as well. So we're keeping the UI and the data, the state here in sync with each other, right? So there is also a little tool I wanna to show you in the next video, which is gonna allow us in the browser or in the developer tools to keep track of the state of the components that are being rendered to the DOM. So I could go to a different tab over here and see the current state of that component. And I'm gonna show you that in the next video.